So if you were to ever solo any individual synthesizer, you know, certain patches like that, it doesn't really contain a lot of low-end information. Like I always say, it's really important to pick where your low-end is coming from. Is it coming from uh, a kick drum? Is it coming from the sub-bass? Is it coming from uh, a piano? You know, just depending on what type of track you're working on. But it's the one thing, like the, the sub-frequencies, the, the low-end frequencies, the waveforms are so large, they take up so much room in our sonic spectrum, that if you have too much low-end coming from multiple sources, it just tends to muddy up your track and uh, it's not the desired result that you want. So I always say pick where your low end is coming from. And in this case, it's going to be this sine wave. So we can close this, and uh, we'll start it there. And what I'll do, let me just, I'll select it, and let me solo it so you can hear what the sub sounds like. So I'll boost this a little bit. I can also go into the uh, structure and increase the volume of the patch from here as well. But I want a nice round, thick tone, which is exactly what this is providing. So when we drop back in with our drums, now already I can hear that my kick drum and my sub are going to fight a little bit. One thing I could do to help with this is maybe tune the drums a little bit. I can tune my kick drum by going to where the tuning is. So if I solo my just my kick drum and my sub together, So that's fairly uh, close to where we want to be. Just detune that slightly. And if it's still too much, you can use EQ or you could even roll off on the decay a little bit. So the, uh, the kick drum isn't lasting as long. But we do want to have some punch from that kick. Again, the low end, I want the attack from the kick, but most of my low end, if you listen to the bass, it's kind of following the same pattern as my, as my drums. So 